Let's continue. Um, what do we have here? We have Dr. Rubenstein. Um, real cool interview again. You know, you know my, my thoughts on Dr. Rubenstein. I'm a big fan of hers ever since I saw her play at Mixed Garage, kind of all the a few places here and there. Otherwise, but again, my kind of DJ, somebody that really enjoys um, getting on it, having a good time, chilling out with friends, and just being a DJ, DJ, right? Um, there's a lot of people out there, especially DJs, why is that kind of a little bit stale, a little bit dry, don't really have any fun. Um, don't seem like they're because it, it, in general it feels that to me have, being a DJ or those kind of things are that's a dream job isn't it like being an influencer or something right because essentially you're getting paid to be yourself right you're getting paid to just you know do the things that you do day by day right you like fashion you like wearing weird wacky combination of outfits and someone's willing to pay you for it and sometimes give you some free clothes on top of it right fly you out to fashion week stuff and go to these art basil events like it's a great life same as a DJ right some you're obsessed with electronic music, you're obsessed with going out to underground clubs and suddenly you acquire a taste for selecting good tunes, you get the proficiency to mix songs together, um, you have a good look about you, you market yourself in a good way and then suddenly clubs around the world are asking you to play weekends on end all around the place. It's a dream job. So I don't really understand some DJs that are able to go up on the, on the decks and just kind of, you know, treat it like some kind of job and just kind of, you know, beat away at the fucking queue and play button and just duck out. I want someone that's going to enjoy and actually um, um, resonate with the experience. Like it's a one-off experience that you're never, ever going to get ever again in life, right? It's a kind of like a real special, special event that you have going. And I, and I, and I, like, I like that. I'm a big fan of that. Let me see if I can get this up here. The, 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 yeah, there we go. Anyway, so those ribbons down here. I have an interview with Crack Magazine. It's a really cool uh, um, interview. I recommend you check it out. There's a bit on here that I really kind of like that kind of spoke about. It's called um, Dr. Rubenstein is in her element. Um, it says here, people always try to figure me out. Mar Marina Rubenstein claims with a glint in her eye as you show off rebellions. Um, Box Hagger Platt's neighborhood on an overcast autumn day. I play hard, but I do it with a smile. It's like a game. You think you know me, but you don't. I love that, right? Um, there's something here that I really liked about her that she said here that I'm going to try and get. This is a real good profile of her, good picture. Um, da, 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 graduating school, I'm into Tel Aviv, historic clubs at the block. Da, 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 where is it? I'm, I'm contemplating becoming a DJ free. Yeah. Um, she ended up playing after that. I'm not going to dance and be sitting anymore. Yeah, so this is one here. So it's a good bit. So Rubenstein contemplating becoming a DJ for three years before acting on it. When a friend who was a manager at Salon Berlin, a, a, a bar in Tel Aviv, asked her to fill in a Monday slot, she was enthusiastically accepted. But then she didn't have any money for records, nor did she know how to mix them, let alone own the equipment. So she ended up playing tunes from her laptop for the 20 people who were at the bar that night. At one point, she just noticed that everyone was dancing. Nobody was sitting anymore. I was speechless. How was this even possible? And that's probably one of the greatest parts of being a dj when you first start especially for me i know um the feeling that you get when you start playing somewhere and it's empty and as people start to congregate around the bar area people start nodding people start like making noises and saying Woo -hoo, or whatever it may be it's such a good feeling because you know you're eliciting that effect by selecting the right tracks and again you're not a musician you're not playing an instrument so it's very hard to kind of glean any sort of satisfaction from the idea that you're mixing these tracks together but the idea that you're able to to, to give them an experience with tracks that they've probably known or they're probably aware of but you've put them in an interesting combination enough to elicit a reaction especially for them to dance to hoot and holler like you just have to pat yourself on the back some because some sometimes you don't have to do that right you don't feel good to kind of jack yourself off but sometimes in that regard especially in, when you first start and you're in some shitty bar where no one wants because i think i've always said before right i think the skill of actually djing comes from playing in really de um crappy weather spoon type bars and making those people dance because that's just a regular average day consumer right that doesn't really know what they want for the most part and they don't really care about you being there they're just there to have a drink and have a good time get some cheap cocktails and keep it moving so if you can make those people dance i think that's when you're on your way to becoming a real elite dj because if you go play at a hackney warehouse party you go and play in phonics or x or y and no one knows who you are but you're djing well you're gonna play well anyway because so you're gonna make them dance anyway because they've specifically come there to go and have a good time i think joey diaz mentioned it recently in a in a podcast with steve simone recently the, the church of what's happening right now he mentioned something along the lines of like how to you know part of the reason why they got better as comedians is that they went to bars and clubs where no one wanted them to be there right no no one cared if they were there or not so you're playing in these bars and nightclubs where, for the most part, the patrons don't know there's going to be comedy on there, right? It's just a normal pub and it's, they didn't know it was comedy now on Wednesday. So you're having to kind of win those kind of people over. But whereas if you're playing, if you're doing comedy or stand-up in an actual comedy club where people actually have to book, go buy tickets to go see people perform comedy on a Friday, they are mentally prepared for it. It's a different sort of like um, mindset that goes into actual play. Same with, same with DJ. If, no one knows if, if there's going to be a DJ in a Weatherspoon bar. So like, yeah, I went to Manchester. Manchester bars for some reason have DJs in there, right? And we don't have DJs in Weatherspoon bars here in London. I don't know why. Maybe it's a 
uh, violence thing. I don't know, but um, in Manchester, the Webster Bar I went to to go watch the anti Joshua fight. Um, they had DJs playing in there, right? And that was a thing. So imagine, so imagine going in a place like that and not knowing as a DJ. And for instance, they're playing shit tunes or they play good tunes to make you dance. As a DJ, you're gonna get satisfaction for it. As a punter, you're gonna be like, oh shit, this guy's actually good. He's able to accommodate for all these different interests that are in this room. I think that's a really good point. And let's continue here. Another bit here, also like along with the two French side in the van. What is it? Um, so one bit I really liked about it back then. So a few records you remember the last tune I played with the control. I uh, have a bit of extreme attitude. So it puts a lot of pressure on me. Yeah, so th th here's a bit I really liked, right? Um, so it's fair to say when Rubenstein sets her mind to something, she commits herself fully. I have an all or nothing attitude, which is, to be honest, a bit extreme. It puts a lot of pressure on you, um, she admits. When she was still living in Tel Aviv, she got into film. She would force herself to watch one film a day, viewing uh, one of viewing of every single um, um, Inga, um, sorry, In Ingmar, um bergman and jim jim jum jim ask how you pronounce that david lynch film um these were uh, her icons of the film world i went to be a director and i used to sneak into lectures and classes into film and tv factory to try and learn as much as possible her discipline approach um to learning about movies was not a dissimilar approach to crate digging when she first moved to berlin rubenstein didn't have a job and would spend hours at the space hall in kreuzberg digging for special tunes her record collection grew very slowly but only two or three records each time back then there wasn't much money left over after playing rent and bills i couldn't even afford train tickets i was running Running away from the BBG controllers for in his bright pink neon coat, like see you never. For 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 Rubenstein, pouring over records into um, hours into refining her DJ skills was paramount to account for the fact that she didn't produce her own music. I needed to educate myself um, somehow and learn about music. So I would just go to record stores, take the whole crate of a certain label, and listen to one by one. I would listen to everything. That's how you learn and discover things. That's something that kind of got me thinking. as a lesson I'm going to attribute because at the moment I'm not producing. I think I will get to a point where I have to produce anyway because I think for the most part. In most DJ circles, it's a fairly common thing, or it's fairly well known that in order for you to become a, in order for you to become a successful DJ, or to get more bookings, or to be to get better exposure, you have to produce, right? Because the production, um, there is a shortage of good tunes out there. I think there's a lot of people making tunes. Whereas, yeah, I think DJ wise is different. I think there's probably a lot of DJs out there. There's probably more DJs and opportunities. Probably a lot of good DJs out there, like similar to me, who are operating on a kind of a bar level who are good enough to play in like you know phonics on x or wire but it's not enough spaces for us to go and play there right because there's only so many DJs that can play there in those kind of events because there's a deluge of them but i think there's probably a lack of actual good producers so which is why people say if you make a tune it will probably blow you up quicker than actually honing your craft as a dj because one tune you get played by one dj and people automatically especially the electronic music scene for the most part if they maybe music in general inside producers get famous too when they figure out you're the person that made that tune they'll want you to play and if they figure out you're a good dj it can kind of cascade and kind of roll into other things um other opportunities down the line but it's very hard obviously to make tunes right it's probably harder to be a proficient dj it's probably harder to be a proficient producer than to be a proficient dj but in order to become a very proficient dj you have to have a very um um you have to have a very obsessive compulsive um, attitude towards it the same way you would be as a producer right you'd be obsessing over a hi-hat or a snare it's the same way you have to obsess about you know transitions about themes i recently i listened recently to this podcast with dj talking about how um in the chicago scene there were some djs that were known for um their mixing skills where they were able to kind of blend certain vocals so they'd play like if there was a song about sexual liberation they wouldn't play it they wouldn't play a song about sexual liberation next to a song about i don't know misogyny it'd be a it'll be songs that kind of had some sort of link towards it right sexual sexual liberation a song about being single um a song about empowerment a song about not taking shit they'll have like a link that links all the songs together and i thought that was a really clever thing to do sometimes i'd never really think of or the idea that i think dj harvey spoke about in his, in his interview the idea that you wouldn't play get down saturday night on a friday night right you'd have to play these songs on the day they're on I've, I've kind of done it myself right i try and have the songs kind of like line up um based on the place that i'm in the environment i'm in all these kind of things kind of add to the whole allure of it but 
again i think the way to kind of separate yourself i think as a selector is to get really obsessive and just listen to everything that's what i try and do now i listen to absolutely everything i select the stuff that i like i include it into my sets i try and make it work and just go from there really i think that's probably the best way to kind of do things but again it's hard to do it's very difficult especially nowadays with people making it on the back of you know maybe images or maybe you know gender quotas and stuff and all that malarkey but i think in the long run after this whole kind of you know social media kind of um push has kind of died down essentially like like all things right there's going to be a scene there's going to be a, a, a space for people that just come up on social to kind of get famous and to kind of get um um notoriety that way that's always going to exist but i think in the long run um djs that are good at what they do will prosper will prosper anyway in general because you're really good at what you can do right you can play a fucking you know uh porsche um launch or something some big corporate gig you can play in some basement bar somewhere in berlin and you can play at a main stage um at a big festival like junction two those are all skills that are really kind of suited to kind of the top of the line djs whereas if you're just used to playing banger sets one hour after an hour you know just like all the best kind of top 10 or top 15 songs sold on beatport it's not really that's not really what djs are about djs are about taking kind of a b-side a track that you've forgotten about a track that you haven't remembered and kind of including it and making it work in that regard but yeah really cool interview with dr rubenstein I recommend you check it out it's on crack magazine right now um it's titled dr rubenstein is in her element a really cool article again from a dj that i'm a real big fan of i love her approach to music i love her the fact that she's actually a, uh, a raver uh, at heart too um she actually goes on a dance and dances which i kind of like as well um the the, the what is it the bit on here that says she actually dances where is it hey, check, check out yourself you'll see anyway it's 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 a big it's a big article i'm a big fan of it and